Welcome to Warrior Wednesday. I'm back from vacation and I appreciate you all giving me a week off. Much needed vacation for sure. Um, but I, I want to teach a class this morning with the theme of change and the theme of impermanence. Um, you know, because I spent a year literally planning for this vacation, and I'm sure you can relate to this, all the planning that goes into it. While we were there, I soaked up every minute. Just I could not have been more present and great, grateful for the experience. And now it's over. And now I'm back in Salt Lake City and I'm in this inversion. And it's like, wow, you know, the things that we anticipate just go so quickly. And the things that we dread go quickly as well, but only in hindsight, right? Only when we look back do we realize that this too shall pass. It's hard to say that when we're in the middle of it. But it was just really interesting perspective because on this vacation, I was like, oh, this too is going to pass and I don't want it to. And then all year, like COVID, this this is going to pass and I want it to. And it just is so interesting to, to know that they both do. So let's practice this morning, this theme of change. And to celebrate change, I'm going to teach, um, I think I've got like five poses this morning that the teaching of these poses, at least in my teaching, has changed over time. And so I think that'll be interesting to look at, like, here's how we used to do these poses and here's how we do these poses now. And this might give us a chance to change up our practice a little bit. So let's all begin in child's pose this morning. Pad up under your knees, because we'll be here on our knees for a bit. And put something under your forehead, either your fist or a pillow, a block, something that allows you to rest here with a little less effort. And we'll use this posture as a coming into our breath. We'll use this pose as our chant this morning to just notice that breath is happening. And even breath itself is change. We never really anticipate the next breath. We just take this one. And this breath comes in and then it's gone. And then the next breath comes in and it's gone like waves on the ocean. This constant change. So notice that. Notice your relationship to this just coming and going that's happening right now with your breath. Notice where breath changes from coming in to going out. Can you sense that exact spot where an inhale starts to become an exhale? And where the exhale begins to turn into an inhale. It's hard to tell that space where things really change. There's a blur. But deepen your breath. Pull breath into your back here in this child's pose and see if you can feel things stretching and expanding, things softening and loosening. In the words of Dana Falds, change proclaims its dominance. Just try and stay the same, it taunts. See how long the status quo will last before it's blasted into newness by the now. See how long the status quo will last before it is blasted into newness by the now. Stretch your arms a little longer over your head. Reach from your shoulders to the tips of your fingers. Lengthen your body. And then tuck your toes and lift your hips up into downward facing dog. 
We haven't done any warm ups. So I just want you to notice how down dog feels at first glance this morning or afternoon, whenever you're doing this practice, how does your body feel in this first look at downward facing dog? <clears throat> Take your feet out to the edge of your mat. Take a really wide stance and start to bend one knee and then the other. Just start to move into the space that this pose provides, shifting side to side, rocking through your feet. And then slowly begin to bring your feet a little closer so they're about hips distance apart. And begin to settle your heels toward your mat. Reach your tailbone higher. Let that be the effort here. The effort is lifting the tailbone up away from the hands. Imagine just pulling yourself in two directions. Your fingertips press down, your tailbone pulls up. And feel that space between. Notice your breath again, the coming in and the going out that invites change. Take a deep breath with me and as you are ready, just exhale long and loud. <sighs> and slowly walk your feet up to meet your hands. And we'll come into ragdoll and I'd like you to bend your knees quite a bit so that you can feel your belly laying on your thighs here. Let your legs support your back. And you can hold still or you can move around a little bit. This is a great place to just explore back of body. If you'd like, you can release your fingers and trace the fingers on the floor to the outside of one foot and the outside of the other. Half circle around you. Stay connected to the awareness of your breath. Notice breath happening. Keep that deep bend in your knees. And then let's bring hands to shins and lift halfway up. Press hands to shins and lift halfway. And then exhale into a deeper forward fold. And let's do that again. Press to lengthen, moving from the hips and fold forward. One more time, press lengthen even more. Tailbone reaches back, head reaches forward. Exhale down over your legs. Now this is our first stop where we're gonna look at a pose that has changed over time. You might have heard teachers tell you, roll up one vertebra at a time. And we now know it's a lot healthier for the spine to come from this flat back. So everybody come up into this flat back and we're gonna take away that cue, roll up one vertebra at a time. And instead, bring your thumbs to the crease of your hips and stand from here, pressing into your heels, squeezing your glutes forward, come up with a straight spine. Awesome, arms come up to reach back. And then hands to heart center, sink into your chair. So we're gonna practice that a few times. So our chair allows us to fold over the legs with a safe spine. Press to lift halfway. Thumbs come into the crease of the hips and let's lift from there. Squeeze your glutes, lift your chest, and then arms reach high. Good, hands to heart, sink down into that chair and fold over your legs again. Let your legs support your spine. Press to shins. Bring your hands to the crease of the hips and lift high, arms overhead. Good, standing here in mountain pose, open your arms like cactus arms and lift your chest forward. Take a few breaths right here. Beautiful, feeling your feet pressing into the earth. 
and then draw hands to heart center. Pause for a full breath out. Beautiful. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale from the hips, swan dive into forward fold. And pressing hands to shins, lift halfway. On your exhale, downward facing dog. And then let's shift forward here, finding plank pose. Taking deep breaths in and out. You can be on your toes or drop your knees. So here's the second place where yoga asana has changed over time. We used to cue, bring your chin and chest all the way to the floor and dive through. And we've seen what kind of damage that can do to shoulders. And so what we're asking now is shift forward. You can be on your knees or your toes, but stop when you get halfway down. So chaturanga, elbows stay 90 degrees. And from there, if you're on your toes, drop your knees, melt your belly to the ground and lift from the earth. So we're gonna save the shoulders some wear and tear by moving in that way. From here, exhale, come back, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Take three deep breaths right here. You can nod your head yes, shake your head no. Looking forward, step or hop your feet to your hands, press to lift halfway, and then exhale forward fold, knees are soft. We come back to that half lift, hands to the crease of the hips, rise up, extended mountain, and bring your hands back to your heart. Good. So let's go through that sun A without all the talking and instruction. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. And let's take a vinyasa. Shift forward into plank pose, knees or toes. Spin the elbows and stop halfway down. Lower the belly, rise up to cobra, or you could choose up dog on your toes, on the fronts of your toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Reaching fingertips into the mat, hips to the sky. Look forward, step or hop your feet to your hands, lift halfway, press to lengthen, and then exhale, fold even deeper. Lift halfway, hands to the crease, rise up, extended mountain, and bring your hands to your heart. You guys look amazing. Let's do one more of those. Let's build some heat. Rise high, fold low. Half lift, downward facing dog. Let's take that vinyasa, shift forward, knees or toes, lower halfway. You can melt to the floor. Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale back, everybody. Downward facing dog. Pause here for three full breaths. Let me see if I can get you some music today. So keep breathing here. Pedal your heels if you'd like. Nice. Yeah, good idea. You might lift one leg. Lift the other. And then with both feet on the ground, slowly walk your feet up to your hands. Hands pressed to shins, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Good, everybody inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Press hands to shins, lift halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take that vinyasa, come forward, plank pose, knees or toes, and lower halfway down, chaturanga. 
Rise up, cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. All right, cool. We're gonna lift the right leg up in the air. And exhale, step that foot between our thumbs. Dropping the back heel. Let's come up to warrior one. And this will be our third stop, our third look at how yoga asana has changed over time. Back in the day, you used to hear a lot of teachers talk about square your hips to the front of your mat. And we often come to this pose with our feet kind of on a tightrope. So I want you to just try that and see how that feels in your body. If you're standing on a tightrope and you try to square your hips forward, it almost always creates strain in the SI joint, low back, and also the back knee. So instead of that, we're keeping the feet a little wider side to side, like you're standing on two train tracks. And we're allowing that left hip to hang out back just a little bit. So you might feel like your hips are facing the front left corner of your mat instead of squared exactly to the front. Yeah? So let's see how that feels if we move with our breath. Inhale, lift as tall as you can here, and then just exhale and hinge over your right thigh. See if you can move without strain to your low back and your back knee. So in these cases, change is good. Change means we're learning. On this next exhale, the hands touch the mat. Step to downward facing dog. And let's take a vinyasa, knees or toes. Pausing halfway and lifting. Back to downward facing dog. Let's raise our left leg high and draw the knee to the front of the mat, dropping the back heel. So now that you know train tracks, step your right foot closer to the right edge of mat and come up from there. Some people now call this warrior one and a half. You're not all the way forward, not all the way side. There's a little ease in your hips. Breathe in, lift your fingers and breathe out, fold over your left leg. Move with your breath. Make sure you're just noticing ease in the body, not strain. Take another deep breath in and release your hands to the mat, downward facing dog. Let's take one more vinyasa here, forward onto your knees or toes. Lower down and lift. And we'll find downward facing dog. Pause here for several breaths. Pressing into your fingertips, your knuckles, but releasing weight from your wrist. You can bend your knees and pull your hips up and back. And then let your heels descend toward the earth. Full breath in, long breath out. Looking forward, slowly walk your feet to your hands, press to a half lift. Exhale, fold. Come back to that flat back, raise up from the hips, arms reach high, extended mountain, maybe back bend and then sink back into chair. Pause here in chair. Breathe nice and deep here in chair pose. Let your hands come to heart center. Find your balance here. Lift up onto one, the ball of one foot, and then the ball of the other foot. So just pedaling the heels, working the calf muscles a little. And you can continue pedaling your heels or come into balancing chair. Lift both heels. Set your eyes on a point that's not moving. Feel the strength in your legs. Love 
that the pets are joining us today. We have curious pets today. So fun. Drop your heels to the earth. Inhale, arms reach high. Open up as much as you can and then swan dive. Forward fold. Lift halfway and step back, downward facing dog. Take that vinyasa, shift to plank, knees or toes. From down dog, raise your right leg high. Lift your toes like you can touch the ceiling in your space. Really reach. And then as you exhale, shift forward into plank pose. Draw your knee to your chin. Hug in tight through the belly. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hug. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hug in. And step that foot to the top of your mat. Nice job. Let's turn the back foot out, rise up, warrior one. Maybe one and a half. Move around and see what your body offers here. Let's cactus the arms, opening up even more through the chest, elbows reaching back. Take a deep breath in here. Beautiful, exhale, hinge forward from the hips, touch your hands and maybe your elbows in front of you. And inhale, open. Exhale, tuck. Let's go one more time, open. And forward. Releasing the hands to the earth, come onto your back toes and raise your right arm up, come into twisting lunge. Breathe here. If it feels better to have your back knee down on the mat, you're welcome to do that. And let that hand come down to the earth. Drop your back knee and slide back into a, a half split. Just take a few breaths here, noticing right hamstring. Pull your toes back closer to your face. Notice this breath coming in and the breath that follows out. Constant change. No two breaths are the same. No two yoga practices are the same. Every time you come to your mat, it's slightly different. Let's shift forward. Tucking the back toes, step to downward facing dog. And just notice right leg, left leg. Let's take a vinyasa together, forward knees or toes. Lower halfway, come up, and send the hips back, down dog. When you're ready, raise your left leg as high as you can, touch your toes to the ceiling, really reach, like exaggerate that reach up and back. As you exhale, shift forward, knee to chin. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, tuck. Lift and lengthen. And as you come forward, set the foot at the top of the mat, dropping the back heel, rising up to warrior one. Notice, maybe your heart's beating a little faster, a little more breath. Slow it down by just breathing here. Cactus your arms out wide. And let's begin that movement with breath. The exhale draws us over our left leg. As you inhale, push into the back of your right foot. Stay steady down below. One more nice big deep breath open. And as we come forward, let's bring our hands to the mat. 
We'll come on to the back toes and twist. Left arm lifts. So the right hand is on the ground, left arm up in the air. Good job, Dave. Come on to your back toes nice and high, everybody. There you go, beautiful. Lift a little higher on your next inhale. And as you exhale, lower the hand to the earth, drop the back knee, and let's slide back, finding no left hamstring. You can scoot your heel forward, walk your hands forward. What gives you better ability to notice this breath? This very breath creating change in your body, length in your muscles, space in your joints, peace in your mind, this breath creating change. Let's release Tucking our back toes, stepping again into downward facing dog. Let's take a vinyasa together, shift forward, plank pose, knees or toes, lower and lift. Coming into downward facing father. I want you to just notice here in this downward facing dog, how your chest and shoulders feel little cue is you can spin your armpits in, which will broaden your shoulder blades, and that should give you the ability to kind of pull up with your hips, but drop your chest down a bit. Let's look forward, walk feet to hands, lift halfway, exhale forward, fold. Arms reach high, coming up from the hips, back bend. Let's come back into chair one more time. Hands to heart, either pedaling the heels or coming up onto the balls of the feet, eyes on one point, balancing chair. Breathe. Notice. And then just slowly descend, heels to the earth, belly to thighs, fingers to mat. Soften into a forward fold. Let yourself exhale fully. Let's keep our fingertips where they are, lengthen through the crown of the head and float your back leg up so you're in a three point balance. Low belly, strong, spine long. If you'd like a little bit of challenge here, bring one or both of your hands to your shin. Balancing on your right leg. And with fingertips down, go ahead and step those toes behind you. Let's lift up into high lunge. And in high lunge, we're going to hook our thumbs so that we can lift higher and back. Hook your thumbs and just be on your back toes. Pull your chest up. Imagine arms reaching behind your ears. Breathe here. Opening up that left hip flexor. We'll release our fingers to the sky. Let your back heel drop, open out, warrior two. Warrior Wednesday, take a little wider stance here. Imagine placing a glass of water on top of this right thigh one day. Let's reverse the warrior, wrap your left arm behind, right fingers high, keep that bend in the right knee. 
Good, and then come over side angle, right elbow to the thigh, left arm high. And stay here or reach your arm over your ear. Stay here a couple more breaths in case anyone wants to bind this pose. Breathe, feel each breath, something new. Let's inhale again to reverse warrior. And windmill the hands to the earth, low lunge. We'll let our back foot meet our front foot in a fold. Softening here, lengthening. Inhale and exhale. We'll bring our fingertips again to the mat. Let's float the right leg up behind us. In this balance pose. You can keep your hands on the floor or maybe explore hands to shin. Core stay strong. And then releasing back to low lunge. Let's drop the heel, rise arms high and peel open into warrior two. Take a little wider stance than you normally do so we can get a nice deep bend in that front knee. Reverse warrior, wrap your right arm behind your body. Lift your left arm straight up to the ceiling and stretch as far as you can. Good. Breathe. Awesome, everybody. Come on over that left leg, right fingertips to the sky or over on an angle. Space here. Really press your right ankle into the earth and bring your right arm up and over. Bind if you like. That's it. Beautiful. Inhale. Reverse your warrior. Good. And then cartwheel your hands to the earth. Come to low lunge. Step your back foot to meet your front foot. Forward fold. With a bend in your knees, lift and lengthen halfway. Hands come to the crease of the hips, rise up. I'm gonna offer one more chest opener here. And this is kind of fun because we're all at home and have different spaces. Um, we're gonna look at downward facing dog with some options. So option one is just down dog on your mat. Option two, wall dog, okay? So if you've got a wall nearby, you're gonna bring your hands to the wall and let your chest come down. You're gonna find a little more chest stretch in wall dog. If you don't, a couch or a table, is great as well to put your hands on top of a, a chair, a couch back, a window seal. Just see if you can get some place that allows for a little more space in your chest and shoulders. Your knees can stay soft. If you're at the wall, you might walk your fingertips higher, but keep your head and chest lower. The gravity do the work here of opening your shoulders. Explore bending and straightening knees and see what happens in your chest, in your upper back with bent or straight knees. One more breaths here. Just being patient as these tight muscles from all of our forwardness are releasing. And ease yourself back up. Come to neutral. Let your arms rest at your sides, palms forward, and just close your eyes and notice your body standing. Those chest and shoulders after that big opener. Let yourself exhale. 
and then float your arms back out and up in a great big circle good swan dive forward fold same giant circle press hands to shins lift halfway and exhale downward facing dog Raise your right leg high. And as you exhale, draw the knee towards your chin and set the knee by your right wrist for pigeon. The knee comes down by the right wrist and then drop your back knee. So this is another pose that over time has changed, hopefully. Um, you used to hear the instruction a lot, square your shin to the front edge of the mat. And that only works for people with the most flexible hips. For the rest of us, we want that foot back closer to underneath your left hip. All right? So you just want to feel where there's no pain in your right knee. From there, tuck your back toes and scoop your back knee back. And that's going to give you more sensation around the hip. You can do it a few times. Tuck your back toes, pull your left kneecap backwards. When you find your place, go ahead and lower to elbows. We're all the way down. You want to let the knee be the boss here. If there's any sharp pain, you want to adjust and bring that foot underneath us more. Notice breath in, notice breath out. Notice the place where in breath becomes out breath. Out breath becomes in. Constant change, nothing is permanent. It's all temporary, including this breath this shape, this posture, this practice. another deep breath into your whole body and release allow your hands to come to the earth press down into your palms lengthen through your spine lift your chin find a tiny back bend here be in your body with your breath Soften your elbows, tuck the back toes, crawl your way into downward facing dog. And if you'd like, you can just shake out that leg, bending and opening, circling. Give your right hip some movement. Whenever you're ready, raise your left leg nice and high. And come through for pigeon on the second side, left knee to left wrist. As you drop your back knee, take time to find the right place for your left foot. And if there's a point of pain in your knee, adjust. <laughs> and then start to tuck your back toes, scoot your right kneecap back more. If still it's not working, you guys always have the option to come around in a seated figure four, which is a lot more happy for a lot of knees. Same stretch, less pressure. And then allow yourself to lower down. You can rest your head on your hands or walk. Find a place where you can notice in breath and out breath. And notice the space between the breaths. 
What do you notice when you are holding that fullness of a breath? And what do you notice in the emptiness of breath? If you pause briefly between the breaths, you might notice that in one or the other places you feel a little panicky. It's either when your breath is full, like holding, or your breath is empty. Just notice that. Notice places of discomfort with breath. And notice that it changes temporary discomfort. to find our way back up, hands on the mat, maybe fingertips with a little lift and a back bend. Pause to notice that change. We'll release planting hands, tuck your back toes and slowly crawl that left leg up for some movement. down dog. Let's drop our knees to the earth. And we'll swing the legs around to find a seat. Legs extended out in front of us. Big breath in, big breath out. Let's bend the right knee and keep the left leg straight. We'll reach the arms high and come over that left leg Janu Shirshasana, one-legged forward fold. Just let your hands come to wherever they do. You can bend your knee as much as you like. I always think it feels good to put a block under my knee just to support a light little bend there. And toes pull back. Notice your breath. This breath. And then this breath. Our bodies are constantly welcoming in something new and letting go of something old. Our breath understands the concept of a parigraha, non attachment. Letting go of the old breath. So the new breath has space to move into. Come back up to a neutral spine and when you come all the way tall, rotate your torso to the right, take an easy twist. Let your belly hug in tight on your exhale bringing up, cleansing your organs, your digestive system, really squeeze with your belly muscles. Pump the belly open, squeeze the belly closed. Come back to center, switching sides, right leg straight or slightly bent, left knee bent to the side. And reach up and over. Support yourself in whatever way you need to to make this pose more relaxing, more effortless. Notice non attachment to breath. Fully let go of the exhale. 
the carbon dioxide go all the way out so that oxygen has more space to move into. Beautiful exchange in our bodies of gases, of oxygen, of CO2 is change. It allows for life. take an easy twist to the left side. Even our digestive system knows that it needs to let go in order to make room for something new. Breathe and expand your belly and as you breathe out, really hug your belly in, squeeze, massaging those internal organs. your way back to center. Find a comfortable place to lie down for your final relaxation pose. If you need another stretch or movement on your way there, please give yourself what you need. Just take a couple of minutes resting in Shavasana. as you can once you get there practice letting go notice any holding that might be happening in your jaw your mouth or your face see if you can release the muscles there notice shoulders that might still be lifted and allow them to settle to the floor Notice if breath is less full and complete and give yourself permission to have that full, easy, natural breath. And rest here. Just noticing breath in and breath out. Notice another deep breath in. And notice where it changes to out breath. And where out changes again to in breath. And be there as that wave changes.
be there as your fingers start to wiggle and be there as your toes move. Be there as your body starts to stretch and feel a new sensation of yawning, of awakening. Be there through this transition from your back to a side and around to a seat. Let your hands come over your chest once you get into your seat, one on top of the other, to celebrate again this breath, this heartbeat, this being here. As I leave you with these final words of Donna Falls once again. She says, change isn't always flashy like the Grand Canyon. Sometimes it's subtle like the blinking of an eyelash or the floating of a feather on the wind. Say yes, and change will take you somewhere unexpected. Say no, and you'll end up in the same place, resisting all the while. I'd rather go willingly and see if the journey itself just might be worth the ride. I'd rather go willingly. Bring your hands to your heart. I had the realization today while we were holding pigeon and I got emotional that vacations can't last forever, but neither can viruses. Summer can't last forever and neither can winter. We breathe in and we breathe out. And we ride the waves of change with yoga here to help us do that. Thank you all so, so much for helping my re-entry be a smooth one. I love you all dearly. Namaste.